think I'm trapped in some alternate reality? You look like you've seen a ghost. I almost died. You don't remember? I remember it differently. The monitor has done something to my memories. Dad, are you okay? Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pagey, here once again with another video on Arrow Season 8. So we are down to the last two episodes of Arrow before Crisis on Infinite Earths, you know, begins. Like, we have this week, Episode 6, which you would have just watched the trailer for, I'm pretty sure, which is otherwise entitled Reset. And then next week, where we will be returning to Leanne New, but with, once again, a bit of a weird twist for, you know, the most episodes I've had this season outside of probably the past two. And that episode will be called Purgatory, and will be the last moment for Oliver in regards to, I guess, preparation for Crisis on Infinite Earths, and I guess the, also, like, the last time that he will be quote-unquote alive on an episode of Arrow. So hopefully all goes well there. Like, here's to hoping. Now, this upcoming week's episode is directed by David Ramsey, who, of course, plays Diggle on the show. Now, usually when an actor directs an episode, it means that they are used very sparingly in an episode. So maybe like one or two, maybe three scenes if you're lucky, or they aren't in the episode at all. Like when Katie Cassidy directed her episode, only I think she had directed episode three, which was like the Thea episode, Laurel wasn't in the episode at all. So don't expect much Diggle in this week's episode or any at all. I don't think he was in the trailer from memory, so that should give you a suggestion as to... I guess Diggle's role in this episode. But in this video, we are going to go over that trailer and the best bits from it, some information as well, and also some uh, like inside stuff, if you want to call it, on the spin-off show of Arrow, otherwise known as Green Arrow and the Canaries. But of course, throughout the video, be sure to let me know all of your various opinions on what we go over and just your opinions, theories, thoughts, all that. Let me know in the comment section down below. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and you're excited from what we go over in this video, why not drop a like on it, to uh, like on it to show your support and excitement. But first, we will quickly go over the synopsis or description for the episodes. It does give us a bit of a better idea as to what's going to happen specifically in episode six. After being double-crossed by Lila, Oliver finds himself facing a life-or-death situation that seems very familiar. Laurel has the opportunity to make amends with the past. So, basically, we start off the trailer by seeing Oliver waking up in an alternate reality where... Well, there's a couple of things different, but the main thing is that Quinton Lance is alive. He actually survived that gunshot that killed him um, from, you know, a presumably Ricardo Diaz, because that's what happened in the show, and you have to assume that's what's going to happen in this alternate reality, but they could change it where, like, Banana Jim did it, but you have to assume it's Ricardo Diaz. Now, one thing I'm curious in, like, about in regards to this alternate reality, and let me know if you agree with me, is Oliver still mayor here? Like, because they show him, like, in, like, like a, what looks like a mayoral setting, like, maybe, like, the, the town hall and, like, the mayor's offices mayor's offices and stuff like that. So, is Oliver still mayor here? Um, and Renee is still sort of working for him? Not 100% sure what's going on, on here exactly, but it, it sort of does give off the feeling that Oliver might still be mayor here. Um, or mayor, if you want to pronounce it. Like, it's mayor in Australia, but it's mayor in America, and most of my... Amer audience is American, so I'm saying mayor. So, you know, English and Australian people don't get, don't crucify me for saying mayor instead of mayor. But yeah, just based off that, it should be a bit different. Like, really, you think, if you think about it, this alternate reality where all this lines up and, like, Quentin Lance might have still survived, you could argue that maybe Felicity should still be in Star City, but that's for us to wait and find out. Now, obviously, the synopsis or, you know, description does refer to Laurel having the opportunity to make amends with her past. And obviously, this has to do with Quentin. This, you know, straight up has to do with him. Um, she's going to get to spend some time with Quentin again. And obviously, it's... It's going to be interesting, specifically, how this plays out in the episode, whether it's like a big part of the episode or just a small thing, but I think the main thing around this with Laurel is maybe just getting closure on all that, on that whole situation around like, you know, because Quentin took the bullet for her, like, that's the reason he died, she, he took the bullet for her, um, so maybe just getting closure on all of that. Um, especially just seeing that Quentin survived that deadly scenario this time around. So it'd be interesting to see what Quentin thinks of Laurel, saying that he survived and all that. So um, I'm guessing this will be some of the best stuff, I guess, in regards to emotional scenes. And, you know, usually those are the best type of scenes in regards to, like, Arrow and Flash with certain characters, like Arrow and... Uh, not Arrow and Quentin, Oliver and Quentin, Laurel and Quentin, Oliver and Diggle, um, scenes like that. And I'm assuming this will be the same, so I'm expecting some good stuff here. Now, we do see an explosion, yes, an explosion that sends uh, Quinton, Laurel, and Oliver. I think those are the three characters that are there. Uh, like, Oliver and Laurel are dressed up as Green Arrow and Black Canary, and they sends them back. And it does seem in that 
in like the next shot that Lila is in the same room. You can see there's like um things on the right right hand side there. They're on the right hand side of the same shot where Oliver, Laurel, and Quinton get sent back. And well, Quinton, uh, not Quinton, sorry, Lila is standing over them with a goddamn gun. So maybe an Oliver, or maybe Lo Oliver and Laurel are sort of like breaking through what Lila and the Monitor are doing here because Lila looks pretty pissed. Uh, but then again, Lila could be super pissed at Laurel for what she did in the previous episode where um, she sort of exposed her to uh, Diggle. So, because that was a bit of a mark drop moment because, you know, the Monitor could have easily shown up to, uh, to help Laurel and not put Lila in that situation. But I am like overly intrigued to see what the, the premise of this episode is because it seems like it's going to be in present day. So it's going to be 2019, but just in his alternate reality. So Quinson Lance has been almost dead for two years, really, in the in, in, in where we are. Um, so I want, it'll be interesting to see like what's happened since then in this alternate reality where Quinton would have been alive. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see what the like the plot of the episode is and what they're trying to stop and what the threat is and all of that. Now, the big thing is, is like, where exactly are they this episode? Because it's obviously an alternate reality that's been made pretty clear. And I don't know if I'm the only one thinking this. I'm sure there's more people because I don't think this is like a out there thought because it's happened on the show before and only a couple of seasons ago. But does anyone think that this could be in the line of like the Dominator pods from the invasion crossover that sort of allowed that hundredth episode to happen where we saw like Robert Queen, Earth One Laurel, Moira Queen, all of them come back. Like I don't think it'd be too much of a stretch to think that the monitor would have access to either one of those pods that the, the that all the arrow people got put in during the invasion crossover. He would have access to something like that or he would have just he just taken those pods maybe he destroyed a monitor a, a, a dominated ship or something and has those pods and is able to do with them what he wants so that could be something that happens there because i don't know necessarily how this happens you know obviously i don't know like i guess the monitor could do it but you know obviously they are doing a lot of throwbacks this season with a lot of various things and that would be one hell of a throwback to actually use those pods and pretty much do something similar to what we've already seen them do so in the 100th episode it was to pretty much allow them to be in this alternate reality where all these characters could come back and want to do the same thing here so Quincy can come back and maybe even some other deceased characters who knows who else might um, guest star in this episode and cameo so who knows what could happen there but it wouldn't surprise me if that's exactly what's happening here um, in regards to this alternate reality. It's because of the Dominator pods. Now, I thought I'd end off this video with talking about some spin-off stuff. So the spin-off is, well, fastly approaching because we have the backdoor pilot for the spin-off in episode nine, which is, of course, the episode or the week um, following Crisis. So they got like a pretty good position there because they will get a higher viewership than usual just because it's following crisis but there has been a lot of talk about this on um, this spin-off like in like a negative way mostly because it's been a lot of i guess bad publicity i guess is the best way to put it so a lot of people have been asking about like what the spin-off is going to be now the original premise from what we know is that it was actually going to be future team arrow so it was going to be what we saw pretty much last season and last season really set it up so you know how last season when all like the, I guess you could call it like the old people or the boomers um, left uh, all the young people in the in the future, that was almost pretty much set up for what the spinoff was going to be. So it was William, Connor Hawk, um, Mia and Zoe. That was, that, that was literally what the team was going to be. So Zoe died obviously in Arrow. So she was a casualty of them changing plans. And, obvious, and they didn't have to kill her, I guess, but I guess maybe it was just to lower the cast when they came back to the present day because um, I don't think they were ever meant to come back to the present day either. I think Felicity leaving the show was a main factor in them changing the storyline and Mia coming back to present day. I think if Felicity stays on the show, Mia doesn't come back to present day. So what would, would that have made this season better? I don't know, you'd have to think about it, I guess. I'm not going <laughs> to jump to conclusions and say it would have been, but I think it might have been, I don't know. But we now know, that obviously, the show is called Green Arrow and the Canaries, but even though that comic cover that sort of Mark Guggenheim put out, which was meant to be almost like an advertisement sort of thing for the spin-off, that was a bit misleading because now he said, and he's pretty much confirmed, that the spin-off is set in 2040. So it seems that Mia and William and, I guess, Connor, whether if all of them survive crisis, I know that Mia and William do, um, they go back to the future. So I guess Laurel and Dinah also go to the future or their future versions join them. But when they were filming the cro uh, the, the spin-off pilot, Laurel and Dinah weren't in their like old makeup. Like they didn't put like the makeup or the wigs on and stuff like that. They were just looking like their present day selves. So there's a lot of confusion and it's pretty much causing some drama around the 2040 setting because no one's really sure what to expect because you got the Olicity fans, which are like a really small percentage of the people that watch the show, but they're a very vocal minority that are like slamming 
I guess, Laurel and Dinah being on the show and they want the future Team Ari stuff. But then you've got to think the majority of people who just sort of want a present day thing, if they're going to do this spin-off, not really one of the 2040 setting because it's a pretty dead setting. It's not very interesting. But obviously, Crisis could change that. We don't know what's going to happen with Crisis and what happens there and what changes. So it could be a completely different future from what we see there. But they have said in the past that that future is concrete. Nothing would ever change it. So that future would always be like that. So unless they go back on their word, it will be the same. Now, in regards to why they changed it, um, Catherine McNamara, who plays Mia, had in her contract pretty much, it's been confirmed by people on set as well. So this isn't like theories. This has been confirmed by people on set. She has a thing in her contract, which is the only reason she signed onto the show, that she would get a pilot episode and she would be the lead character. So that's why it was going to be future team hour and she was going to be the main character. But now it's sort of morphed into this other spin-off thing. Why that changed, you can theorize, and why they felt they needed to bring in Laurel and Dinah instead of having the uh, the other future team hour members be the main sort of um, focus. You can theorize all you want there. I think it's fairly obvious. But this leads into whether the, the show goes forward because that pilot thing in her contract, I'm pretty sure um, gets covered if they do a backdoor pilot. So if episode nine is the backdoor pilot, I think that might count in her contract. So they necessarily don't have to go forward with the show. However, and there's been people saying like, oh, the show won't go forward. I don't think we'll get enough views. I'd be shocked if the show doesn't go forward. I think it'll get enough views if Black Lightning can stay on air and get less than 500,000 viewers. I think this will get at least six to 700,000 views, which isn't a lot, especially for a new show, but I think it's enough to keep it on air, especially because it will be a cheap show to get off the ground as they can just reuse a decent amount of the Arrow sets. You know, just put some dust on them, I guess, to make them look a bit older and just add a weird filter like they did. Um, Look, it'll get, it'll get them through season one. Whether it keeps them around for multiple seasons is another question. But I'd be shocked if it didn't get picked up for series order just because it's got um, already existing characters. They don't have to really build off anything new. They can introduce new characters, but for the most part, they're just dealing with already existing characters, which, you know, certain groups like each certain character. So they get multiple um, sources of viewership, if that makes sense. But yeah, as I was saying before, like ratings will be important. Um, but it'll be important for episode nine specifically, which was the backdoor pilot, but seeing it's the week after crisis, those ratings will be a bit skewed, um, and not as accurate as they should be compared if it was like episode 10 or maybe episode three, where they did the, uh, the backdoor pilot. Um, so it's hard thing to, you know, base the potential of the show over, but it will be the deciding factor for the most part, I think, but we'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm, I'm sure they'll give us an announcement on whether it's going forward pretty soon after episode nine airs. But I'm here, guys. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, it'd be awesome if you could drop a like on it to show you support. Let me know in the comment section down below your various opinions on what, what we went over. What are your thoughts on this uh, week's upcoming episode with the alternate reality and stuff like that? What do you think is going on there? And what are your thoughts on the spinoff? How excited are you for the spinoff? That's what I'm sort of curious about um, because it's, it's very mixed. It's definitely probably the most, um, I guess, not controversial, but I think it's just so mixed that it's hard to tell where it's going to go but yeah let me know in the comment section down below and of course if you are new to the channel make sure to subscribe and i'll catch you guys later goodbye